Hey guys, welcome to the Nate Take. My name is Nathan, and today we're going to be putting a Timney Alpha trigger into a PSA full-size dagger. All right, of course, before we start this video, firearm safety is extremely important. So right now we are going to render this one safe. All right, so we're keeping our finger off the trigger. We're going to drop the magazine out, and then we're going to grab the slide, pull it back. We're going to lock it back, double check to make sure that there's nothing in the chamber, which there is not. There's nothing in the magazine well. So now we know that this firearm is safe. I've had this Palmetto State Armory dagger for several years now. I also have their subcompact version, and there's a problem with both of them that I would like to fix. And that problem is the trigger. And this goes for pretty much all Glocks as well, is that they have a very long travel, okay? So when you pull that, it takes a long time until you finally reach the click, all right? That I don't like about it, and I also am not a big fan of the curved trigger shoe. So today what we're gonna do is we're going to install the Timney Alpha here. Let's see if the camera will focus on it. There we go. Timney Alpha, uh, it's for the Gen 3 Glock, but since the Palmetto Dagger is based on the Gen 3, it is gonna be a direct fit into the dagger as well. So we're gonna install this and see. Uh, this advertises a three pound trigger pull, which the dagger is right around five pounds from the manufacturer. So this here should improve it. Ideally, what I'd really like is a Canic trigger, but Canic triggers don't fit in these, so we're going to have to go this route. Now, there are a couple ways to go about improving the trigger on your Glock or your Dagger. One common method is to just update a couple of the parts that are in it with some aftermarket ones. For example, you can do the trigger link and a couple of the springs, change those out and get a slightly different feel is what's advertised. But I already did that to my Dagger and I don't notice any difference, so I'm going to go for a drop-in trigger. I spent approximately $80 on a couple parts for it and couldn't notice a difference. So now I'm opting for a drop-in trigger instead. All right, now the actual disassembly I cannot show on here, so I'm gonna have to blur it out, but it's very easily available online. YouTube just won't allow me to show it. Now the gun is in two parts. What we're gonna do is we're gonna set aside the slide. We're not gonna need that for the rest of this upgrade. And now we're going to look just at the frame of the gun itself. Now, if you're anything like me and you don't take the greatest care of your guns, as is you don't clean them super regularly, uh, now is probably a good time to go in there and clean out any dirt that you can see. Mine, it's mostly dust, but if there's any carbon buildup or anything, you're going to want to clean that out while you have this open. Okay, so we're going to set this up here. Now we're going to take a look at what comes in the Timney trigger box itself. We're going to open it up and all right now in this little envelope we've got some stuff in here let's see what it is got a legal disclaimer here it basically says that you should comply with the installation instructions or it could cause you bodily harm which makes perfect sense because we are messing with the trigger here if you're not at all confident in this whole process, you should definitely take this to a uh, licensed gunsmith and have them do it because this is a uh, critical component of the gun and if you mess it up, you could hurt yourself or others. It's not worth it. So if you're not at all confident after watching this video, take it to a gunsmith, you won't regret it. All right, and then we've got a little more literature here, uh, some stickers here, and of course, installation instructions for your trigger. Nice photos on the back there, as you can see. Shouldn't have any problem following these whatsoever. Okay, now, as far as the components themselves, let's open up the container that they come in. We've got a nice little tool kit here. It looks like it has some punches and it looks like a screwdriver of sorts in there. This here is a trigger return spring that they supply. They have two different colors here. They have a silver one and a red one. Uh, you're going to use the red one if you're using an aftermarket connector and if you're using the stock connector bar you can use the silver one. This here is your sear assembly and this is your trigger assembly and the trigger bar. Okay so to begin the actual assembly we first need to remove the stock components that are in here which means we got to remove these pins. Now if you guys have any experience with daggers if you've done any work on them before maybe you've heard rumors I'm going to confirm them it is true these pins are extremely difficult to get out and they are not at all like the Gen 3 Glocks where they were, where you can put, just push them out with a punch. Every single time that I've had this open, I've had to use a hammer in order to remove the spring pins. So we may have to do that today, we'll see. I know the first time I removed them, I was scared to death I was gonna break something because they were so stuck in place. 
All right, so I've grabbed my punch set. Um, if you don't already have one of these, I will provide a link down in the description where you can pick these up. If you're gonna do any sort of firearms work, whether that's on this or any other firearm, I highly recommend getting a dedicated set. Uh, and also I'm gonna have this little hammer here in case I need it. And one last thing I forgot. I've got a block of wood here to set the frame on like this so we can get pins out more easily. Now, these roll pins require a special punch. See if you guys can see that there. So I might bring this in over here. So these roll, these roll pins require a special punch here. It has a little round uh, bump on the end of the punch. You need that in order to uh, remove the roll pin because that little that bump goes down into the roll pin just slightly and that ensures that you don't mess up the roll pin and have to replace it. So we're going to start off by removing this trigger block right up here which involves this roll pin and this pin here. Let me see, let me see if I can do it just by hand here real quick before I use the hammer. Nope, that does not want to come out. So we're going to have to use the hammer. Make sure you have the correct size so that you don't deform your roll pin. There you go, starting to move. There we go. That's our front roll pin. We're going to set that aside to make sure we get them in the right spots. They are all slightly different, so you generally don't have to worry about mixing them up, but I like setting them in order just so I don't have to think too hard about it when I'm putting them back. Okay, now we are going to remove this solid pen right here. So we're going to grab our regular punch that doesn't have the bump on it. And we are going to position it here. I'm going to try and see if I can push it out. It doesn't want to push. One thing you can try here is before you resort to the hammer, while applying pressure to the pen, you can wiggle the slide lock lever. And that will sometimes let it out. The reason that it can get stuck is that there's a spring for the slide lock and that spring can sometimes jam up that pin because the pin has little divots in it where it registers with the parts and uh, just wiggling this lever will sometimes do the trick. Now in my case, oh there it goes, it actually did it. There we are. So pull that out, set that aside. As you guys can see there, if it'll focus on it, that pin has the little divots. That's what I was talking about, that the spring gets caught in. Okay, so now we are going to pull off the block here. Set that aside. We're going to reuse that, obviously. We can pull out the slide lock lever and reuse that. And now we are going to remove this rear roll pin here. Again, we're going to use our roll pin punch right in here. This one. Nope, that's not going to go by hand, so we're going to have to use our hammer again. Now this one has always been the hardest one to remove for me. Um, I, it's just the tolerances are super tight, and yeah. That's a dagger thing. That's Generally, this is, isn't the case on Glocks. Careful my light there. I don't need to turn that on. almost out. There we go. And that's our last roll pin there. Okay. So now what we can do is we can pick up the trigger assembly here just by pulling up on the bar and it all pops right out. Okay. You can set the frame aside for now. Now the parts that we're going to use off of here is going to be this plastic block here that everything sits down in and the connector bar. So we can go ahead and pull out the trigger bar here. There we go, just like that. There we are. These parts we are not going to reuse, so we can set those aside. And we are going to still use the same uh, connector here, so we are going to leave that in place. Okay, so now we are going to take a look at actually installing the new parts. So we're going to open up our little tool kit here that they give us. Alright, so we've got a couple different bits here. And we're looking for the bit that will fit this little screw here on the bottom of the sear assembly. 
So we're going to find the driver that fits that. And we're just going to loosen that up so that here's a little bit of space because we're going to have to slide a plate in underneath of it. If you look down inside of here, there's a curved surface and then there's the straight surface matching on this sear assembly. So we'll just drop that straight in and you can see the screw poking out at the bottom. Now the bag that has the trigger return springs in it, what we're going to do is we're going to open that. There's a little C-shaped part on the inside. That one right there, if that focused on that. This is going to get inserted underneath the head of that screw that we just loosened on the sear assembly. And if you need to, you can loosen it up just a little more. It's going to be kind of tricky to get in. Just kind of have to fiddle with it. If it doesn't want to go in, which mine doesn't, that means I need to take my screw out just a little bit more. Probably be useful if you had a pair of tweezers or something to put this in. Okay, there we go. So we got it installed right there, and then we just tighten the screw down on top of it. Make sure that that little washer is all the way back, as far back as it'll go, so it doesn't interfere with the fit. All right, we're good to go there. Okay, so with that little screw tightened in and the sea washer in all the way, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our trigger bar with the shoe assembly already on it. And now's the time when we're going to install the uh, re trigger return spring here. And again, the red one is for use with the aftermarket connector bar, which I am using, and the silver one is for use with the factory. So I'm going to grab the red one. Oop, not drop it. All right, I'm going to try to show you up here on the actual trigger shoe, I don't think you guys are going to be able to see this, but on the trigger shoe here, right here where the tip of my finger is, there's a little tiny hole in the plastic. You're going to take the spring, the return spring, and you're going to insert it into that hole. And then, you see, can you guys see that? Is it focused? So you inserted it into that hole. See where it sticks out right here? Right here on that side, it sticks out right there. You're going to take it and snap it in over that little ridge there. There we go, so it'll look something like that right there. All right, that is what we're going for, right there. So it's poking out that hole there, and then it's on that little plastic ridge. All right, so with our trigger return spring installed, what we can do is we can now put it with the sear block, just like that right there. It doesn't attach together the, the factory components the factory components, the two were held together with a spring. This one does not use that spring, so they don't really go together, but they just slide in like that there. Um, so just the little slot, this right there, that's on the outside. Okay. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our frame again, and we're going to put this in. Oh, make sure our spring's in place. We're going to put it in the same way that we took it out. Just slips right in right there. So this is what it should look like right there once you have it installed correctly. Okay now we're going to take our locking block and we're going to insert it back into the frame here. Now this is the important part. This little trigger return spring that we put in we have to pull that back so it goes underneath this piece here. Okay. So the trigger return spring goes underneath this part of the block. So in order to do that, you're going to have to use a small screwdriver, which they do supply in the kit. So we're going to take our small flat blade screwdriver bit, put it in. Come on. There we go, just like that. Tighten this down so it doesn't fall out on us. All right, so the best way that I can see to do this is to take the screwdriver going from the right hand side of the frame you just you put it in slightly and then leveraging off the block itself right here we're going to grab the end back of that trigger return spring pull it back until we are just under just come out of that edge of that lip and now you're going to have to hold it because now this block is under spring tension and then we can put our pin in place all right so with that installed into there what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my punch, doesn't matter which kind, but just one that's close size to the to the actual pen. I'm going to put that in there in order to hold the block down in place. Now, that way I can take my hands off and move it into a better position for reinstalling the pen. 
we're going to take our front spring pin. Whoop, make sure that doesn't fall out. We're going to take our front spring pin here. So I'm not going to reuse my block of wood here because all I'm doing is putting the pushing the pin through now. Um, so I'm just going to insert it. Make sure you get the correct one. And then again, I am going to use my punch that has a little divot on it just to make sure I don't mar up the face of that roll pin. And then we're just going to gently make sure that's seated in all the way. I'm just going to gently drive it home. If it, if it doesn't want to go, most likely this front of the block there has popped out slightly. There we go. All right, so the first pin is back into the firearm frame. Now, we need to put our locking slide in before we continue. So we're gonna have to hold the block in again. Let's see, it might not pop out now, but I'm gonna have my thumb there just in case. I'm gonna put this same way we took it out. We're gonna have to sneak it in past the trigger return spring there that we just installed. It needs to be, so looking at the gun from this direction, the trigger return spring needs to, be, needs to be on this side. So this spring needs to go up underneath of the return spring that we just installed. Like that right there. They'll basically, they'll basically be side by side, but uh, the return spring needs to be towards the middle of it. All right, now to line everything up, just so it's a little easier, I'm gonna use my punch. I'm gonna put it in there. I'm gonna wiggle things together, because those two springs are kind of rubbing up against each other and can kind of not necessarily want to line up perfectly until they have that roll pin in there to hold them the way they're supposed to be. So we're just gonna, there we go. So the punch is going through and holding that in place so it's approximately where it should be. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna put this pin back in, which is the one with the little grooves in it. We're gonna put it in in such a way that we replace the punch, basically, is a good way to think about it. Because that punch is in there holding everything in, making sure that the alignment is correct. So as we do it, I'm just gonna push across. I'm gonna keep that punch in there as much as I can. I'm going to have to use a little bit of a hammer persuasion on it. Okay, something didn't align correctly. I see. Okay. So the springs, even though I had the punch in there, they managed to misalign it just a hair. Because this because this punch here is not the same exact diameter as the, as the, uh, the pin. So we are going to have to fiddle with that a little bit to get it into place. I can see the end of it, it's just slightly out of place there. We're just kind of fiddle with the trigger there a little bit as we look into it to see if we can get it to line up perfectly. All right, so after fiddling with it, it looks like I need to pull up on the trigger assembly slightly. And there we go, popped right in. All right, with that pin in, we can put the last roll pin, which goes at the very back. This one should be easier to get in. Again, we're going to use the punch that has the little nub on it, our roll pin punch, and we're just going to drive this home. Just be careful while you're doing it. Make sure that's seated all the way before you actually do it. There we go. If you experience any resistance, most likely this sear assembly block back here is not in all the way. Um, so we can just double check it, make sure it's seated. This is actually isn't even in all the way. Let's. There we go. Okay, now it's below the, the edge there. We're gonna double check the function of the safety. That's the most important part, correct? We're gonna check the rest of it later when we put the slide on here in a second. Um, you're gonna grab just the black part. Not gonna touch the red shoe, right? The safety shoe. You're gonna grab just the black part and you're gonna pull it back. It should barely move at all. All right, if it goes all the way to the back, you know that the safety is not operating correctly, and you're going to need to figure out what the reason for that is. Now, if you push on this trigger shoe as well, it all slides to the rear just like that there. We've verified the 
uh, function there is correct. So we can go ahead and reinstall our slide, which again, I can't probably show on YouTube. All right, so we've put everything together. All the parts are in place. We don't have any extra parts laying anywhere on our bench, which is important. And we've done the quick function checks of the safety there to make sure that the uh, safety bar is working. So now we've got our slide on. What we'll do is we will go ahead and rack the slide. And now we can just feel our new trigger. Nice. That is very nice. Very crispy, as they say. Very happy with that. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. Let's go ahead and ghost the trigger together. A little bit of travel, very short travel. Compared to that stock trigger, that is so much shorter. Nice clean break. Hold it like this so you guys can see. That's the take up. Nice clean break. I don't think that's right. A little longer than a few minutes later. All right, so uh, a quick update here. Um, I had a bit of an issue. After I got everything put back together, the trigger felt fine until you tried to reset the trigger. And then it didn't reset. And then you release the trigger and it would fire around. Obviously, it didn't actually fire around because I'm just in testing. There's no live ammo involved. But I figured out the problem. And the problem was this aftermarket connector bar here. So take that out, put the factory connector bar back in with the silver spring of the, of, for the Timney here, the return spring, silver return spring, and now it works correctly. So if you have an issue with essentially what's binary fire, um, double check and make sure your connector bar is the factory connector bar. You're probably going to know if you ever changed it out, but if you got the gun secondhand or whatever and didn't know, Double check it and make sure it's the factory one in there. So now let's check the function of it. So first of all, we're clear. Nothing in the barrel, nothing in the magazine well. So I'm going to ghost the trigger. All right, so there's the take up. Clean break. Very short reset, and then again. So it's a very nice trigger. I like it the way it feels on here. I like it way better than the stock trigger. Um, I'm sure I'm going to enjoy it a lot more in shooting. I've I've cycled it a bunch without any actual ammo in it. I've cycled it a bunch. I haven't got a single failure since I replaced the the Ghost Link with the with, back with the stock um, connector bar. Now with the Timney triggers, you do have the option of adjusting the amount of uptake that there is. So the dead space before you hit the wall and then it clicks. That dead space, you can reduce that. Um, there's a screw on the inside of the actual trigger. So you have to take the whole thing apart, pull out the trigger unit, and then by where we put the trigger reset spring in, there's a little tiny hex screw and that comes with a driver in the toolkit. You can just turn that in and out in order to get it exactly where you want it. Now you do have to be careful, and I'm not going to show you how the process to do that because if you don't know what you're doing, you can make it very dangerous to actually carry the gun. All right. So if you do too little travel, it's basically it could go off before you expect it to. And so I'm personally not going to mess with mine. I recommend you don't mess with yours unless you are really know what you're doing or unless you take it to a gunsmith who knows what they're doing and they can make sure everything's working correctly. All right, so now I got to go put a couple rounds down range, more than a couple, and I'll come back and let you guys know my final thoughts on it and if I would actually recommend this.
All right, so that is the end of 200 rounds on the new Timney trigger right there. Very, very, very happy with the Timney trigger. Um, didn't have a single issue with it whole entire time. Granted, 200 rounds isn't a ton of rounds, but it is a decent sample size. I think if I was gonna have an issue, I probably would have noticed it starting by now. Um, perhaps a couple thousand rounds in, maybe we'll see something. And if so, I'll make an update and let you guys know about it. Um, so would I recommend the Timney trigger? I would. It's not gonna give you an exact Canik style trigger if that's what you're going for. I've heard a lot of people say Canics have some of the best from the factory triggers. Um, this here gets you kind of close. Definitely is way better than stock. Um, I would recommend it if you have either a Glock or if you have the Palmetto State Armory dagger here like I do. And it'll fit in both the compact and the uh, full size, this being the full size. I don't know about the, I think they have a micro out now. I don't have one of those, so I can't say for sure if it'll fit. Um, so yeah, I highly recommend it. It was super smooth, it was crisp, it was consistent, and it was, it was good, I liked it. It hasn't made me a better shooter yet, but that will only come with more time and practice. So, final thoughts, recommend the trigger, go out and get yourself one, pick them up. You can get them on Amazon, on eBay, you can get them from Palmetto State Armory, which is where I got mine. You can get them all over the place. Um, highly recommend them and they definitely will fit the PSA dagger if you were curious. All right guys, that's all I got for you today. I really appreciate each and every single one of you. I understand this is not my normal video that I upload. Um, I, this is just part of my life, right? So my channel, it's all about everything that I do, the Nate take, and this is my take on the Timney Alpha trigger for the Glock. If, it, if this Vic type of video isn't your cup of tea, I totally understand. Um, and we'll be doing more other stuff that you'll more likely seen normally on this channel here soon. Um, in the works on a couple different car videos actually right now as we speak. And um, I'm gonna be expanding into some woodworking because I finally am working on getting a shop area set up. Um, tool restoration, stuff like that. I got a bunch of stuff planned and um, hopefully we're gonna maybe stay a little more consistent this time. That's what I'm gonna shoot for anyway. <laughs> Pun intended. All right, uh, let's see, anything else? I don't think so. I think that's pretty much everything. Um, if you're, if you install the Timney trigger, be safe, be smart, don't be dumb. It's very easy to do. You don't have to take it to a gunsmith. I'm not a gunsmith, and I was able to do it fine myself. Didn't hurt myself with it. Um, yeah, just be safe. Always important. Remember, the number one safety in firearms is you. So don't don't be stupid. All right. The birds don't seem to have anything else to say either, so until next time, this is Nathan, signing off.